Well guys, it's been a little bit, but I've been really busy. So getting ready for Miata's The Gap, getting ready for Drag Week, I had a couple of hurdles to jump over before I do these events. Uh, one being which the cooling system. The radiator fan setup I had before wasn't enough. The radiator did okay. Uh, the fans were just not enough at idle. So cooling system was still my crutch again. Um, and then also going on long drives, we have the pipe going from the header to the turbo collector. And that was so close to the balancer, I would keep melting my belt. It would keep overheating the belt. It would shred it and that'd be the end of my drive. So I've actually had a lot going on lately. So I'm gonna kinda get you up to speed on what we've, what we've got going on now. So I did end up getting the street tires mounted on and they look exactly as retarded as everyone else thought or stupid or silly looking. A lot more narrow, but in the same regards, it's gonna suit the necessity of having a street tire. And then let's go to the front. We'll see the big changes. So we did end up finally installing my new Chase Bay's 240 tucked radiator, which will not fit any normal Miata. So please do not try this. You can see it's actually a little bit wider than the frame rail. And then also right here, we actually had to clearance it just to fit the dang bumper light. Uh, but this is all done. I just finished wiring it. So now I have a single 12 inch uh, slim Mishimoto fan. I have an 11 inch race fan. So total combined CFM should be about 2,800 CFM, which is over a thousand CFM more than what I had before, which that's a pretty big step up. So let's, let's pray that these uh, cooling system changes have made an, uh, an effect. And then also you can see down here, that's the crossover that actually used to be, like I said, under the balancer. So now it just comes straight out of the header like this and then right across into the collector. So I'm actually curious on one thing too, if it'll actually free up some back pressure because on that same header runner before, um, we took, we basically eliminated two 90 degree bends. Well, I've always been told that 90 degrees, whether they're long or short, they still create some restriction. So I'd be curious. Now, the one thing that I just did lastly is I finally wired up this dang fuel pump for the low speed and high speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fuel pump on. So now this is the low speed, which is pretty manageable. And then I'm gonna test the output for high speed. So now, whenever my engine sees three pounds of boost, it's gonna kick on the high pump like that. So that's pretty cool. So I finally got all these things taken care of. Um, I just gotta run to the store. I gotta get some distilled water. Um, and then go grab one of the cans of water water out of the trailer. But other than that, besides tidying up a couple wires, we're in good shape for this, uh, for this coming weekend. So Miata's at the Gap. We're actually going to be there exactly one week from today. So seven days until Miata's at the Gap. And uh, feeling pretty good about it. So I want to uh, put some cool or put some water in it, warm it up. Um, I'm very curious about the fans. Like if I let this thing warm up to let's say 190 without fans on, and then turn on the fans, I'm curious what happens. So before, it would maintain it at about 205 to 210 degrees, but that was just idling. That wasn't me like driving down the street and stopping at a stoplight. You know, that would carry more residual heat with me. So if this thing could regulate temps a lot better, we're gonna be in good shape. So I gotta go uh, to the store, get some water. I'm gonna fill this bad girl up. It's been a couple days. I got something on my lens, hold on. All right, so it's been a couple days since I made the first clip. Obviously I still have the car sitting behind me. I've been defeated lately. Um, sour moods, just not really having a good time lately. So got the radiator set up fabricated. Awesome, I'm pretty thrilled with it. Everything else seemed to work pretty good. Uh, everything's bolted in right now. So I mean, you can see, you know, we have just enough clearance for the fan on that side. We have a good amount of clearance for this side. We reuse this block. That way I can reuse this hose. I ended up actually reusing another one of my other hoses. That way I can keep these fittings the closest off the turbo area. So now it actually comes down around the accessory pulley right into this block. So it shouldn't be any issues because we still are able to bleed it here and the engine bleeds itself with my expansion tank. 
Um, so I get the car home. You guys saw that I changed the wiring. Um, I finally did the secondary, basically kick on for the fuel pump. I went to go add water. I started it, ran it. Um, the entire time it was running, I found out there was a phantom leak on one of the welds. So unfortunately this water pump that we use isn't really the best material. It's like some crappy casted material, but me thinking, oh, let's have everything welded. That way there's no leaking points. I don't got to worry about O-rings. Yeah, that's uh, been biting me in the ass. So I had a couple welds at a very small leak, like very small. Like whenever the car was warm, the, it wouldn't actually leak because the heat would just dissipate the little bit of leak it had. But anyway, I drove the two hours south, had it touched up real quick, drove home. I go to put water in again, little tiny phantom leak. So I've actually had my own TIG for a while now. I'm just not confident in using it yet. But I ended up warming up the spot it leaked and I fixed it. So I was like, hell yeah. So I'm starting to bolt everything together this morning and I go to start trimming the bumper because it needs to be trimmed out a little bit, you know, around the edges, whatever, on both sides. So my dumbass marks the bumper. <laughs> I started trimming the bumper on the car. I have this bit that I found. It's really good for fiberglass. Well, anyway, so I'm sitting there buzzing along. And then I skipped and went straight into the side of the radiator. So the tube started leaking. I lost my shit. I got upset, very upset. I really want to go to the gap. I mean, it's not the end of the world if I don't go, but this is like the last real ultimate test I have before drag week. Obviously I have no problems getting a radiator in time for drag week. So I was freaking out earlier. So phoned up a local guy, um, very old school shop, really cool deal. Uh, Ed's radiator repair in Sanford. Um, and he basically said, the only thing I can do is sandblast the area, clean it real good. I can pinch the tube and it's going to be an epoxy fix. And I'm over here worried, like, man, is that going to hold? Cause I see 30, 40 pounds of coolant pressure. He goes, I've never had an issue. I do all these repairs on airboats. So I have really good confidence in the guy. Um, he actually had this big table where whenever we did the epoxy repair, we set it down into this basically big tub of water pressurized it with water no bubbles so i'm let i'm letting this stuff harden um i'm not even going to put water in this thing until tomorrow but that's kind of where i'm at now i've been a kind of a ghost but i mean i just i don't know what it is with me and cooling systems and this car but i have never had a good time whenever this car was rear radiator i never had able to bleed the cooling system properly so anytime on a good power pass I kept on burping the water out the back. I put the radiator up a front with the modifications I did. I fought that thing for a week, trying to weld it and fix it. And then I decided to put this radiator in because this is the biggest thing we could possibly fit. No problems. But then all of a sudden it comes down on me and ultimately I'm the one that hurt, injured it or hurt it or whatever you want to say. Just a bummer. So anyway, it's uh, Friday night. It's about five o'clock at night. But I mean, other than that, the car is situated. Like I mentioned before, it's on the Cooper tires. Um, the interior is good. I buttoned up all the wiring underneath. So, I mean, like, as long as this radiator holds and I don't have any leaks, I mean, we're good to go for the gap. I really would like to drive the thing a little bit before I go, just because I haven't really driven it on the highway much before. Because before these modifications, the, belt, the, the header pipe went under the balancer, so I kept on flinging belts. So realistically, the longest drive I've ever gone on the highway with the LS turbo setup is maybe 15, 20 miles at 65 mile an hour. Like I haven't driven it much and it sucks because I mean, I've always loved to drive this car when it was a four cylinder. I drove this thing all over Hell's Creation, but now it's just like I <laughs> just my design error is what's been leading me to a lot of failures. So I'm just I'm really hoping that this this radiator is OK. I mean, if it holds the pressure, I have no real need to buy another radiator. Um, but I just, I really, fingers crossed this thing works. So I'm going to continue this video tomorrow, basically, whenever I go to button it up and add water and start it again. Um, and I'll keep you guys updated from there. Well, 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 we got the car up to a full heat cycle. And the repair radiator, or the, the repair on the radiator, it seems to be okay. 
So I just had it up to a full heat cycle, brought it up to 200 degrees, turned the fans on, it brought it down to like 190, and then it just basically stayed there for about 15 minutes. Uh, I just topped off fuel in the tank, so I'm gonna go take it for a drive. I think we, uh, let's go take a visit over to Brian's house. I heard uh, him and Nick are up to something pretty cool. Nick is uh, entered in the Danger Ranger 9000 that Cletus is hosting. So to my understanding, they're putting a roll cage in it today and it's only three o'clock, so I'm sure they're still working on it. So let's go take the turtle across town and go visit Brian and Nick. So it's much later in the night, obviously. It's 10 o'clock at night. Today's taking a kind of interesting turn. So I did go to Brian's house. I did uh, say hi to Nick and them. Forgot the dang camera at home. <laughs> so went back to the house. I actually picked it up. I then drove to Daytona just to get some miles on the car. So I drove it up to the E85 gas station. I filled up some fuel. So I called my buddies, Miata friends down the road if they were at the shop hanging out. They said they were actually driving to a car show in Orlando and they asked me if I wanted to go with them. So I said, I don't know. I really don't know how far I can drive with the fuel mileage, um, but I do know of a gas station nearby where the car shows at that I can fill up fuel. So needless to say, <laughs> we are at some little car show. So Jeff finally got his car running. He ended up having his, uh, his last engine just had low compression and died. I'll turn the light on. So he's got his nice Merlot. He just got his young blood wheels. Looks sick. So Jeff's car is sick. Obviously we got the little turtle sitting down there on the hill. Um, so far, I think I put almost hundred miles in the car today, which is kind of sweet. We got Rusty's anime inspired wrap. I don't know what it is. Something high school on the side, like a bear on the hood. And then also, this is actually the first time I've had a light on it, but they have this Miata. This was Austin's old car and Rusty just actually bought it back. But this wrap is reflective. And they have some sort of an anime, anime figure on the side of it. This is kind of like an anime car show. This is why they're here. I'm just tagging along because I had nothing else to do. And then this is the local tent guy and this is like the coolest airbrushed Mazda me and Jeff actually saw this thing at a car uh, at a Wawa recently and turns out now they all know each other thing is sick definitely a cool truck but yeah there's like um I don't know this isn't my scene at all uh they like burnouts they like the two-step stuff there's loud stereos like it's just this ain't my scene but it was just because my friends were rolling down the street I wanted to join so i think we're just gonna get gas and head home i'll pull out the camera while driving if i can remember or if i can reach the glove box so it is nice i mean i do i did thoroughly enjoy driving the car but i will catch up with you guys just in a little bit we have made it home so i didn't really want to film anything in the car i've been kind of stressed for the past hour so where we were in Orlando, there is a pure power E85 pump nearby. And that's the kind of fuel that I run in my car. Well, we get to the pump and there's two that I know of in my Orlando area. Uh, there's one near Colonial and 50, just like East Orlando. And then you have one more towards Maitland area. I've never been to the Maitland one at night, but I know for a fact the one off East Colonial, they're open at night. Like the whole gas station's off but the pump is away from the building and it's always on like you could pump i go there at three o'clock in the morning after work so i was kind of banking on that gas station being open we pull up to the pump i would accept my debit card it would turn the pump on but i guess the big pump that actually pumps the fuel out wasn't working so basically i have to do the math calculations i'm going to put it right here on the screen how many miles i've driven today but i filled this tank up in daytona we just drove all the way to Orlando and we drove all the way back to my house. Um, rough looking at the odometer, I'd assume somewhere near 120 miles that I've driven total today. I don't exactly know how many miles I've driven since I filled the tank, but uh, GPS, I'll be able to figure it out. So I've been kind of stressed out. Hopefully I made it home and luckily we're home. We are safe and sound. And I'm going over the car right now. Um, so looking at everything. So the recent changes we had made we added the new radiator. So driving 
uh, during the day. It was 97 degrees. Uh, my buddy Brandon actually passed me when I was going to Daytona and I asked him what the ambient air temp on the truck said. He said 97 degrees. My coolant temp never went over 190 degrees. Now, going in the night, we drove from that little car show back to my house. I mean, it's 12 o'clock at night. I don't know the temp. I know it's a little bit cooler out. My temp gauge didn't even go above 180 on the way home. So like, I am beyond happy, like that's sick. Um, the other changes we made when we were at Mikey's is we put the crossover now, the crossover's here instead of under the balancer. And look at that. We still have the exact same belt um, throughout this entire trip. Now before, whenever the, uh, the header pipe was under the balancer, I melted that belt in 20 miles on the highway. And today, I mean, 90% of the driving we did was on the highway. So honestly, this has been the longest drive that I've ever taken this car on with the V8 swap. So I'm, I'm thrilled, I'm really happy. So I, I can't be any more thrilled. Today was a very good test. Um, I got really no, uh, no worries going to Miata's at the Gap now. Um, we are leaving uh, Wednesday, we'll be in town on Wednesday. So that's good. So the other thing I forgot to mention what came in today, I finally got my skinnies. So now this is gonna sound kind of weird. So I have a pair of VMSs coming in that are skinnies that are the same wheel design as what I have. They are gonna be 15 by three and a half, but first they are going on the drag week trailer. <laughs> that way the drag week trailer has got matching wheels to the car. It's gonna look sick. And then whenever we're home from drag week and I'm ready to go back to the track and try to set a personal best or anything, the skinnies will actually be put on the car. Cool enough point is that the trailer has the same lug pattern as the car. I think that's pretty freaking sweet. So guys, I'm, I'm happy. Like I haven't been this happy in a long time. Just being able to drive the car long distance today, it, it was huge. It was very huge. I know this car to me to drive is actually pretty boring, um, especially on long cruises. The Kirky seat kind of tires my butt out and it's, it is pretty loud. But I will definitely say I am so happy that I got this brushless fuel pump. This brushless fuel pump, I actually turned it down now, so it doesn't kick on high speed pump until five pounds of boost. Now, I did play it with it on the road today. Whenever I'm actually giving it throttle and flooring it, by the time that the engine's making five pounds of boost, it drowns out the noise of that fuel pump. So I never hear the fuel pump realistically anymore. And driving it around, you can barely hear that it's on. It's just the exhaust that's loud now. So I'm, I'm thrilled, guys. Drag week is in 43 days. We out here, baby. We out here. So appreciate you guys watching this video. I'm extremely excited. It started from the lows and we ended up with the highs. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.